Today we're gonna to talk about how our brains and faith work together. I'm Angela. I am passionate about breaking the stigma of mental health issues among fellow Christians. I'm here to help you live a more purposeful life in your relationship with God and with one another. I hope you'll subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you don't miss out on any of the upcoming videos. If you spend any time at our house, you're likely to hear my husband say something like, oh, my brain is broken. Well, what else do you say when something isn't working properly? It's been about 12 years since my husband was diagnosed with bipolar 2 disorder, and it's been a pretty big roller coaster in our lives. But I'll tell you, it's been a lot less difficult once we had that diagnosis and we had the medication and counseling on board. So it's no less of a roller coaster, but it's like a roller coaster with the seatbelt on. A couple of years ago, Rick and Kay Warren lost their son tragically to suicide. And they said this, that when any other organ in your body can get broken and there's no shame in it, your liver stops working and you say, hey, I've got diabetes or a defective pancreas or whatever. But when your brain stops working, then somehow people are supposed to feel shame. And so then a lot of people who should get help don't end up getting help. It's clear that it's time to stop looking at our brains differently than the way we look at the rest of our organs in our body. My mother-in-law, Karen Howard, recently said to me, mental illness knows no boundaries. You can be rich or poor, you can be educated or uneducated, you can be from a different country or background, mental illness knows no boundaries. But with the stigma, it's often common um, to say, oh, you know, with mental illness, it's a spiritual problem, or to go to the other extreme and say, you know, faith plays no role at all in its treatment. But isn't there room for an integration between faith and the treatment of mental illness? Dr. Andrew Newberg, Director of Research at the Jefferson Myrna Brind Center of Integrative Medicine at Thomas Jefferson University and Hospital in Philadelphia, has done extensive empirical studies on the brain while people engage in concentrated prayer. And his conclusion was amazing. If you practice prayer a lot, you can actually change your brain confirming that we're hardwired for this faith that we have. And you can learn a little bit more. I'll put the link in, in the notes below about this study. But this isn't to say that we don't treat mental illness with medication and with counseling. I firmly believe that, and that's what we've done in our family. But it's only to highlight that there is power in prayer, and there's power in prayer on our brains themselves. We were created to connect with God in prayer, and um, this is part of who we are. Ephesians 6, 18 says, Pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. There is an integration of prayer, faith, and the treatment of mental illness. How do you see um, our brains working together with faith and the treatment of mental illness. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it in the comments below. Please subscribe for more videos. I'll be sharing some great tips and encouragements for those who are struggling with mental illness and have loved ones who are as well. I can't wait to hear from you and I'll see you next time. I'm Angela. I am passionate about breaking the stigma of mental health issues among fellow Christians. I'm here to help you live a more purposeful life in your relationship with God and with one another.